In this part of the video, we will configure a single area OSPF. To achieve this, we need to configure the links as shown on the topology. Now we will be using slash 31 as a subnet mask. As you can see here, these six switches support slash 31 will perform link aggregation and we will look at how OSPF look at the link aggregation. We will also look at how OSPF will do equal cost multipath on the links between the switches. In the next part, we will do the uh, multi-area OSPF. So we're going to create um, area 1 and originally we have area 0. And we're going to see this is going to become an ABR. And then we will configure the multi-area and look at the behavior of the OSPF. Um, in this part. I configured switch 1 and 2. I'd like to show you the config on switch 3 just as an example. When you log into CX switches by default username admin password is blank nothing and if you get prompted for a new password then you will add whatever password you choose. So now a new password has been um, set. You go to config which is global config. I will write these commands for you in the comment and the first thing we're going to do is to change the host name into something that is meaningful. Now, uh, SSH server is not enabled on the default VRF. If you issue the command show SSH server, you're going to see the message says is not enabled on VRF default. This means it is manageable only from the MGMT interface. But you can as an option if you wanted to go and enable SSH server on the VRF default and you can then connect from any other IP uh, on that default. Now we'd like to go to interface MGMT give it an IP static by default it can pick up an IP and VH by DHCP but in this case we're going to assign an IP static um, .81 and then we default gateway 10.254.1.1 name server 10.254.1.21 so we just done this basic config I'm gonna write these commands for you in the comment we've done this to all switches and we should be able now to SSH to these switches if need be um, and uh, basically you can bring 10.254.1.1 you are able to bring you should do it from VRF MGMT. Now you are able to ping, as you can clearly see, you can ping, say, 8.8.8. .8 you can ping 8.8.8. .8 .8. Uh, again, from VRF uh, MGMT. Uh, I made a mistake, MGMT. We can see that we are able to ping. Okay, so we've done the basic setup. We're going to configure the interfaces uh, as we want them to be configured. So if you remember, this is how the topology looks like. And that topology, we're going to configure interfaces as per what you see here. Now, this is, so we're going to do it on, on interface 1, on, on switch 1, switch 2, switch 3. We'll do the loopback interfaces as well. These are going to be used as router IDs for the OSPF. And we're going to use slash 31 in the interface configuration. So this um, is a virtual switch. Mimics um, the behavior of, inter of switch model 8400. And if you look at show interface uh, brief, you will notice two things. They're by default admin down. And by default, there are there three interfaces. This does not mean there's no VLAN in this case, but we're going to configure these interfaces because they are layer 3. We'll assign them IP address directly and we will um, bring them up. Before we do this, we would like to create a link aggregation between uh, switch number 1 and switch number 2. As you can see, we'd like to create this link aggregation on interfaces 1 slash 1 slash 1 and 1 slash 1 slash 2 on both of these switches. So we're going to perform this one first, and then we will continue to configure the um, OSPF. So we're going to start on switch. We're going to start on switch one. The 
this is to uh, enable LACP uh, no shutdown and then we go interfaces one slash one slash one slash slash one slash two and we will make them members of lag one which is we just configured no shutdown so these interfaces have been now no shutdown show the ACP interface you're gonna see that LACB blocked because the other side has not yet been configured but we can see they are members of lag one they are not functional because switch 2 has not yet been configured we're gonna finish uh, the IP addressing in this case uh, we will go interface lag one now we'll configure the IP addresses on uh, first switch I'm gonna do something similar to the other switches start with lag one We'll do something similar on the rest of the switches. We'll come back and verify um, connectivity. So on switch one now, we'd like to look at basic connectivity. First of all, we need to look at the um, LACP interface. We can see everything is up because the other side has been configured. And I can issue the command to LLDP neighbor. You can see we're connected with four different interfaces. And I should be able to bring the directly connected interfaces as we can see. So from here, should be able to bring 10.1.1.1, 10.1.1.5 and 3. These are directly connected interfaces. So we'll just verify one of them, 10.1.1. And we are able to bring that one with no problem. We can bring 10.1.3, repetition 2 and there we go and we can bring dot five that's not an issue whatsoever it means basic connectivity between one three and two uh, is established from the switch number two perspective we can also bring um, 10.1.1.7 and then 10.1.1.9 which is which are the ip addresses on switch number three this will ensure we have full connectivity uh, established between directly connected interfaces. It's now time to configure the OSPF itself. Now we start with switch number one and we're going to repeat something similar to switch number two and switch number three but we'll show you the config on switch number one. Um, start with the router OSPF process number one. Configure the router ID to be the loop back so create the area as an option interface loop back one IP or SPF one area zero so you will enable OSPF on all interfaces and you're gonna do this is on interface now lag one and loop back we're going to do something similar to interface three and we'll do something similar to interface number four as well so we've done the uh, that in all interfaces show 
IP or SPF interfaces. You're gonna see, we'd like to look at the preform of that. Now we can see it's waiting, but it's gonna come later. And um, so we have enabled it on interface three, four, lag one, and loopback interface. After a few seconds, we see that the output of this command, um, we are de designated router, because that is now broadcast interface. So if I issue the command show IP OSPF interface specific one, let's say three, you can see the network type broadcast, the IP address, and the VRF is default, and the cost calculation is 100, and you see these are the parameters, and it is itself designated router on that specific interface number three. And uh, that would be the same or similar to uh, lag one and so on. Look at the cost here, calculate is 100. Let's look at the similar command on lag interface. Notice the cost has been halved into 50 because the link speed is doubled up 2000 megabit per second, that's 1000 megabit per second, and that's 100 megabit per second. We're going to repeat the same process on the rest of the switches, the other two switches. So now, for example, on router number one, or switch number one, we can say show IP or SPF neighbors. We can see we have one neighbor known from lag one, and that neighbor is BDR. This neighbor on interface three and five, uh, IP addresses three and four, interfaces three and four. The neighbor ID is in switch number three, and the neighbor relationship is full. It's BDR. And the same if we look into, for example, switch number two, now we can see show IP or SPF neighbor. We're going to see the neighbor on um, the neighbor IP 7 and 9, that is on interfaces 3 and 4, and has BDR itself is DR. So basically, that um, switch uh, on the interfaces that are facing switch number three is DR. And the interfaces that faces switch number one is BDR. The reason for this because it started first. Whoever starts first on that broadcast network interface, that would be DR and BDR. We can change the interface type to point to point if need be. So we can do this. And if we do this, then you have to do it on both ends. You will notice after we change it, uh, DR and BDR will not be applicable. Uh, we'll take an example of one interface, so let's say an interface 3 here, and that would be the same on interface 3 on the other uh, switch number 3. We're going to change that to point to point. So we're going to go interface 1 slash 1 slash 3, OSPF, IP OSPF, network, we say point to point, that's what we want to change on this one. And we also do something similar on the other switch, which is in this case switch number uh, three. So, so that interface has become point to point. If you continue this way, that interface will lose neighborhood uh, because this interface is point to point. The other one is by default the broadcast. So if you issue the command show IP OSPF interface brief, you're going to see this is point to point, it's no longer DR and BDR. So we go now, that is the one that connects from the LLDP, show LLDP neighbor. Interface 3 connects to the neighbor, switch 3 on interface 3 on that neighbor. So we go to that neighbor and issue the command interface 1 slash 1 slash 3. And we can say show run current context, we can see these are the interface config. So we're going to go OSPF network, IP OSPF, IP OSPF network, point to point. And actually, if you issue the command, you should not, you should lose neighbor relationship or the adjacency relationship between itself and the other switch on that interface. So um, IP OS, um, OSPF neighbor. You're going to see that that interface still uh, says DRBDR, 
but we're gonna um, actually um, you see this is connected to uh, neighbor dot one neighbor dot two but we'll look at that also so um, we're gonna go IPOSPF network point to point so I can say now show IPOSPF interface brief we're gonna see this has become point to point number three which is the same as switch number here this is number three has become point to point right so here we can see that show IPOSPF neighbor we're gonna see this is now full without look at this there's no priority the reason for this because there's no dr or bdr is not relevant uh, relative relevant to this because that is relevant to the priority when it is a broadcast now this is not applicable and the relationship is full we can keep it this way as best practice obviously is a good practice this is just point to point makes it more efficient let us now verify the routing table in any of these switches. We should expect to be able to reach the loop back interfaces for all uh, all neighbors. So show IP route, you can say OSPF. That will tell you what has been learned from OSPF. Notice we have in here says O it means OSPF and this is the destination. The, so we learned from this is the loop back interface, right? And the next hub is learned through something and notice the cost here and notice the cost here 150 because now you can go through the lag uh, interface to reach that destination um, yeah we're gonna save a checkpoint here so we're gonna just do a checkpoint with the same name on this one um, We'll move on now to the open OSPF uh, multi-area uh, design. In this part, we will configure the OSPF multi-area. So we're going to add uh, another area one here. We'll uh, create loopback interfaces and also we'll configure what's so called uh, summarization for the network. Let's have a look. So we'll leave uh, switch one and switch two in the same area. Switch three, we will add area one to that switch three. So we're going to create um, OSPF1, area 1 we can show run current context, you can see we have two areas here on that switch, we're going to create a new loopback interfaces, loopback 100, IP address 10 dot, dot. another loopback uh, and we will enable OSPF1 area 1. And then we create another loop back interface 200. And we'll enable OSPF1. I will assign an IP address of uh, 200. I will enable OSPF1 um, in that. So we have VLAN 200, um, interface loop back 100, interface loop back. 200 and we'd like to look at this configuration example show running config current context we see that this is one of the loopback interfaces and it is um, in area one and it has this IP address now I'd like to explore the IP uh, of speed interfaces you can look at the preform of this we can see we have loopback interfaces. Loopback one in area cost is this much, and loopback uh, 100 and 200 in area one. The rest is area zero. Now, this switch has become an ABR. Now, if you issue the command show IP uh, root um, here, I show IP root written table. Notice obviously from a previous configuration to reach that destination. Um, you have equal cost multipath as we can clearly see 
here. And the same applies to this one. And here to reach this loop back, it's local. Okay, it says L means local. And C means connected. So connected here, that's the uh, connected interface. And that's where the, the network, where the interface belongs to. And that's the actual IP address of that interface. Now we need to look at, say, for example, switch number one. Uh, if switch number one, we'd like to see the new updated route and there would be another type of route available. So show IP or SPF, show IP route or SPF. You will notice that we have another type of route. It's called OIA. IA means inter area. And we have learned this one on OSPF1, on switch number one from interface. The next hub will be five and three. These are the IP addresses on the switch number three, the one that facing, um, if you notice, these are the IP addresses dot five, dot three, and dot five. And if you go there, you'll find dot three and dot five, the same dot three and dot five. The cost is equal, and that's also called equal cost. You notice these are the two destinations and they are inter-area uh, routes. So if you notice here, again, uh, on, on the switch number three, show run, show running config, we can see the running config and here we have our SPF area zero and we have our SPF area one as well and the interfaces that belong to these OSPF. So that's the OSPF, the router ID is this. Let's assume I would like to summarize the uh, routes to loop back 100 and loop back 200. So, um, as because they are th slash 32, I would like to create a summary here. So we're going to go router OSPF1. I might say area one range uh, 10.1.50 dot zero slash 24 type inter area so that's the inter area i'd like to summarize this one and uh, this means that i am creating a summary for the two loop back interfaces now let's verify the routing table in uh, switch number one for example notice things have changed now we rather than have individual route to individual loop back interface we now summarize these two with a single slash 24 again going through interface you know ip addresses five and three interfaces four and three and the type they are inter area routes the cost is the same so basically this is just to show you how we can summarize the networks uh, in a in a you know more efficient way if you would like of course that's just an example if you have you can summarize hundreds and thousands of subnets if need be um, in this case in this short video we have uh, explained how to create ospf domain if you like and uh, that's an area zero single area of spf also we explained in this video how to create multi-area of spf as well as we demonstrated the multi equal cost multipath as well as how to summarize the network in a smaller number of networks. Thank you, I'll see you in future videos.